Anjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschachyate Satarine Vanchakaupata Rudyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bio Vaishnavibio Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasati Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we welcome everyone to our Bhakti Shastri course this morning. We're on lesson six, entitled Transcendental Krishna Consciousness. Right? So, we will review yesterday. We spoke about Krishna's response to Arjuna's question about the symptoms of a self-realized soul. Right? Who remembers Arjuna's questions? What did he want to know? Hare Krishna? Yes? How does he speak? How does he sit? How does he walk? How does he speak? And what is his language? How does he sit and how does he walk? Right. And then Krishna replied. Krishna gave, we, we went over all of Krishna's responses. When we talk about what is his language, how does he speak, it's, you know, it's not just simply what language, but it's how he uses the language. How does, does he, is he very passionate or very assertive, particular symptoms by which the self-realized soul will speak? And how does he sit? How does he behave when he's not using his senses? And how does he walk? What, what is his behavior when he is using his senses? So these were covered one by one by, our, by Lord Krishna there in his, uh, in the second chapter. Then principles from our own experience of param drisva, getting a higher taste in Krishna consciousness. And I was explaining how it's really important, really, it's essential that we all get some higher taste in Krishna consciousness. And the advantage of coming, to getting that higher taste is we become very fixed in Krishna consciousness. And we give up the thoughts of sense gratification, material activities, no longer interest us, no longer attract us. You know, young men like very much football and they like to watch football and and television and things like that. But if one has a higher taste for Krishna consciousness, he won't be attracted. He would think just nonsense, just foolish. People kicking a ball around. In the same way we get kicked around in the material world from one body to another. So we need to get this higher taste and we can get it taking part in some of the nice activities, you take part in a good program, a good, maybe Kirtan Mela or Prabhupada Marathon, some kind of program like that, you can get the higher taste. R then identified reasons why and discussed the relevance of Karma Yoga being superior to Karma Sanyas. Karma meaning work and sannyas, renunciation. So karma sannyas means giving up work, renouncing work. But karma yoga is superior to karma sannyas 
karma yoga means working in a detached manner, performing one's duty in a detached manner. That is karma yoga. Generally, in karma yoga, one is attached to working, to a particular kind of work, but one will gradually give up the results of the work for the pleasure of Krishna. So we said karma yoga is superior. Why? Because it gives us an opportunity to fully engage ourselves. We heard any one of the senses on which the mind dwells can carry away a person of intelligence. Even though we may appear to be very renounced, we can easily fall into materialistic life. So karma yoga is much safer, it keeps us busy, it keeps us occupied, so it's superior to karma sannyas. So we're going ahead today, we're going to speak about, first of all, sanatana dharma. Right? Sanatana means eternal and dharma occupation. We were talking about occupation on the material in the material world there's varnashram so sanatandam is eternal occupation and our eternal occupation of course is to be the servant of krishna chaitanya mahaprabhu used to preach used to say jivar swarupahaya nitya krishna da that the constitutional position of all living entities is the eternal servant of Krishna. So sanatana dharma, our eternal occupation, is engaging in the devotional service of the Lord. Srila Prabhupada explains, we have an intimate relationship with the Lord because we are all qualitatively one. The Sanatan Dharma or, or the Sanatan Dharma or sky, the Sanatan Supreme Personality and the Sanatana Living Entities. So Prabhupada is making the point there's the eternal abode, the spiritual sky, the Sanatana Dham. And there's the eternal Supreme Personality of Godhead and the living entities, all of us, we are also Sanatan, we are also eternal. The Lord descends to reclaim these fallen conditioned souls, to call them back to the Sanatana, eternal sky, so that the Sanatana living entities may regain their eternal sanatana positions in eternal association with the Lord. So Krishna comes to this world for our benefit. Of course we know from the Bhagavad Gita, we'll look at that, why Krishna comes to bring us back. Right? He wants us to come back home. We say back home, back to Godhead. So we have our, our, our home in the eternal sky and the Lord comes to attract us, to bring us back there. The whole purpose of Bhagavad Gita is to revive our sanatana occupation, our sanatana dharma which is the eternal occupation of the living entity. So Krishna speaks this Bhagavad Gita to awaken all of us to our constitutional position as the eternal servants. Here's the famous verse from the fourth chapter. Lord Krishna is describing the reason 
why he comes to this world, or when he comes to this world. When does he come? Yada, yada, he. Right? Someone can read this verse. Yada, yada, he karmas, ganir bhoti bharata, abhyutanam adharvasya tadatman srijamiyam. So. All right. So, translation. Read. Go ahead, Prabhu, read. Whenever and wherever there is a decline in religious practice or descendant of Bharat and a predominant rise in irreligion, at that time I descend myself. All right. So, Krishna is telling us when. Krishna is telling us when he comes to this world. All right. When there's a decline in religious practice and a predominant rise of irreligion. Hmm. So actually that you could say the two are related to each other. When there's a decline in religious practice, at that time there will be a rise of irreligion. And this is a suitable time for the Lord to descend. So, he's telling us when he comes. Oh, Adbhutanam, right? Adbhutanam. Yada yadahi dharmasya glanir bhavati parata Adbhutanam adharmasya tadatmanam shija. So, Adbhutanam, meaning predominance, and a predominance of adharma. Adharma, irreligion. We all know what is that adharma, right? Meat, fish and eggs, intoxication, gambling, illicit connection with the other sex. This is, these are the features of irreligion. So when these things are in predominance, that's signal for Lord Krishna to come. Of course, Lord Krishna is only going to come when there's a particular, when it's usually according to schedule. He has his own schedule. So here's the next verse. Someone else can read this. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaji. Yes. You can proceed, Maharaji, if you want. Go ahead, Maharaji. So here's our Dharma Samstapanartaya. Alright? Sambhavami Yuge Yuge. So we heard when Krishna comes, now we're hearing why he comes. Go ahead, Maharaji. To deliver the pious and to annihilate the miscreants, as well as to re establish the principles of religion. I myself appear millennium after millennium. Right. Millennium after millennium. What do we mean a millennium? Anybody know? Maharaji, what's a millennium? In different uh, yoga. A yug. In Kali yug, in Dvapa yug, in Kleta no. yug. Means in every yug. In every uh, Lord appears. In every yug. In every yug. Okay. Yes. Krishna comes. He said, I myself appear. So, Lord Krishna comes. Of course, he has so many different avatars. So, sometimes he comes, sometimes it's his avatar. Uh, let's see. Next, Dharma, some Dharma, the principles of religion. Right, Dharma, the Dharma, the symbol of religion is the bull. And the bull is standing on four legs. And these four legs represent the pillars of religion. Eh? Who knows what are these four pillars of religion? You know the Sanskrit?
What are the four pillars of religion? Principles of religion? Daya. Satyam, Sotyam, Daya, Tapa. Right? Satyam, truthfulness. Sotyam, cleanliness. Daya, mercy. And Tapa, austerity. So these are the principles of religion. And because they are practically nothing today, that's why the Lord had to come. So some dharma, some stapana, some stapan to establish the principles of religion. So Lord Krishna came 5,000 years ago to establish these principles. Of course, we have also Lord Chaitanya also coming to re-establish some stapan to establish an artaya for the purpose. So, the, for the purpose of establishing the principles of religion, dharma samstapan artaya. This is Krishna's purpose in coming to the world. Of course, other things also done, giving pleasure to the devotees and removing or annihilating the demons or the miscreants, those who were opposing the, the mission. So Krishna's main purpose in coming, of course, is to please his devotees. He knows his devotees are very anxious to see him. Some people may say, oh, the devotees, they're, they're all, you know, they're already delivered, they're all doing their devotional service, why do you need to come? But the Lord comes because He knows the desire of the devotee and He wants to satisfy their desire. All right, someone like to read this? Yes, please. Uh, dharma is Thapana Thai. The principles of a dharma or religion are the direct orders of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. These principles are clearly indicated throughout the Bhagavad Gita. The Lord directly orders at the end of the Gita that the highest principle of religion is to surrender unto Him only and nothing more. Okay, so Prabhupada is making the point here. The highest principle of religion is to surrender unto Him only and nothing more. So, this is the highest principle of religion from the Bhagavad Gita, like that, explained like that. Now, of course, if you read Chaitanya Charitamrita and or teachings of Lord Chaitanya, you may, may read about Lord Chaitanya talking with Ramananda Rai, right? And when Lord Chaitanya met with Ramananda Rai, Lord Chaitanya asked Ramananda Rai a question. He asked him to quote some verses from the scripture about the ultimate goal of life. So Ramananda Rai began giving, first talking about Varnashram and then next thing he talked about was uh, Karmarpana, offering the results of work and then after that then he spoke about Swadharma Tyag. Swadharma Tyag is mentioned here, just as Prabhupada is saying, the highest principle of religion is to surrender unto Him. So, at the end of the Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada is saying, at the end of the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna said, the highest principle of religion is to surrender. All right? Who knows this verse? 
the highest principle of religion to surrender to Krishna? Thank you, yes. What's the translation? Do you know? I don't all the religious principle and just surrender into me, not Krishna. Right. Give up all religion, give, give up all your principles of religion and just surrender unto me. Right. I will free you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. And so Lord Krishna was giving his assurance to Arjuna. So Ramananda Rai suggested this as the highest principle of religion. But Lord Chaitanya wasn't satisfied. He said, no, go further. <laughs> go on. Right? Lord Ch and then uh, Ramananda Rai quoted uh, Brahma Bhutta Prasannatma, which is uh, Jnana Mishra Bhakti. And then he quoted another verse from Srimad Bhagavatam about pure devotional service. Jnani Praya Samudha Pasyan Namanta Eva Sprishyamti Jivantisam Jivantisam Oh, I'm forgetting. Anyway, Stane Stita Shruti Gatantan Van Manobir Yet Praya So Jita Jito Pia Sita Istri Lokyam And Lord Chaitanya heard this. He said, yes. He said, this is what we want to discuss. He said, now go on from here. Right? So Lord Chaitanya didn't accept this highest principle of religion which is mentioned here. And Prabhupada explains why. He said, because some people, they may surrender to Krishna, but they may have some material motives in surrendering to Krishna. And we do see that sometimes. People may come to Krishna consciousness, they have some material motive. They think, well, I don't have anywhere to live, I don't have any food, I don't have any job, maybe I'll just join Hare Krishna, I can work there, I have a place to live, I have food and everything. Like that. So they come like that. Their, their mood is not really just to surrender to Krishna, but they're thinking more about their own material situation. So, like that. However, here, at this point in the conversation, we accept this principle, surrender to Krishna. Surrender meaning give up all swadharma, give up all your material religions, or your religions which are materially motivated. This is the highest principle of religion. Sarva dharma parigyasna mamikam. So, give up all your material dharmas. This is the highest principle of religion, to surrender to Krishna like that. Okay, so following Varnashram Dharma, we want to discuss this. Govarta apto bhajatam svadharmata. This is a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, 1st Canto, Chapter 5, Narada Muni is instructing Vyasadeva. You can see in the picture. So, this verse is quoted, verse 17, A non-devotee fully engaged in his occupational duties does not gain anything. A non-devotee, he's doing his duty He's performing his duty, but he does not gain anything. He's doing his swadharma, but he's not going to gain anything. Therefore, what should he do? He should follow. He should follow Varnashram. And the idea, the idea of following the Varnashram is that we're meant to come to the spiritual platform. It's meant to bring us out from the material consciousness to the spiritual platform. Varnashrama itself is not on the spiritual platform. But by following Varnashram, by following the principles of Varnashram, we can become Krishna conscious. 
So uh, we're quoting this verse and we see it's quoted three times in the first six chapters of the Bhagavad Gita, right? It's quoted three times. First of all, chapter 2, text number 40. Let's have a look at that. Chapter 2, text number 40. If you have your Bhagavad Gita with you, you can look it up. Right? So, second chapter, verse number 40 is describing. In this, that's the verse, well-known verse. In this endeavor, there's no loss or diminution, and a little advancement made saves us from the greatest danger. So, this is the verse. And Prabhupada talks about activities done in Krishna consciousness, right? He's making the point. Any work begun, I'm reading Prabhupada's purport there from chapter 2, verse 40. Any work begun on the material plane has to be completed, otherwise the whole attempt becomes a failure. But any work begun in Krishna consciousness has a permanent effect, even though not finished. The performer of such work is therefore not at a loss, even if his work in Krishna consciousness is incomplete. One percent done in Krishna consciousness bears permanent results, so that the next beginning is from the point of two percent, whereas in material activity, without a hundred percent success, there is no profit. Then Prabhupada gives the example about Ajamila, that Ajamila did his duty in some percentage of Krishna consciousness. That was when he was a young man, before he met, before he had this, before he had uh, his problem, he had the encounter with the, the unchaste woman and he fell into a very sinful life. But Prabhupada said, the results he enjoyed at the end was a hundred percent by the grace of the Lord. So he, he, he had a gap in his devotional service, but then at the end of the life, he again took up he took up Krishna consciousness and became perfect. And then Prabhupada quotes this verse from Srimad Bhagavatam 1 5 17. If someone gives up his occupational duty and works in Krishna consciousness and then falls down on account of not completing his work, what loss is there on his part? And what can one gain if one performs his material activities perfectly? So, you know, people often say like that, you know, you're joining this Hare Krishna movement. You know, we don't think, you know, what if you, go, what if you leave after some time? You get tired of it and you want to leave. Is it a problem? You know, we've, we've, we see many people come to Krishna consciousness and they don't all remain. But even those who come, they get a great benefit. That whatever service they've done, they're not going to lose that benefit. And it will be there for them in the future. But the, Srila Vyasadeva argues, if you, you may do your material duties perfectly, but what do you gain? They're finished with the body. Whatever you do materially is finished with the body and gone forever. Uh, Am Ambarish Ford, Alfred Ford, you know, the grandson of Henry Ford, he describes how he met Prabhupada when he first met Prabhupada. So Prabhupada looked at him and said, Oh, 
you are Henry Ford's grandson. And Ambarish said, I was feeling proud and my chest swelled and I said, yes. And Prabhupada then looked at him and said, where is he now? And so then Ambarish said, then my head went down and I felt very low. <laughs> because he could understand that while his grandfather was a great man in the material world, his destiny in the next life would not be very good. He made a lot of money, he was materialistic, he had, must, had a lot of sinful activities. So what does one gain? And then in this purport, Srila Prabhupada quotes, coming back to Prabhupada's purport, he quotes, he said, as the Christians say, what profit a man if he gain the whole world, yet suffer the loss of his eternal soul? So this is the point. You may do very nicely for your material body, but what's going to happen to the soul at the end of life? So material activities and their results end with the body. But work in Krishna consciousness, what will be the benefit of work done in Krishna consciousness? It will carry us again to Krishna consciousness. After we give up the body, we continue with Krishna consciousness. Just like we saw Pankajangari Prabhu leave the body, we know he's gone on to serve Krishna in some other situation either in the, the spiritual world or wherever Krishna needs him. So Prabhupada says, Prabhupada's purport, at least one is sure to have a chance in the next life of being born again as a human being, either in the family of a great cultured Brahmana or in a rich aristocratic family that will give one a further chance for elevation. That is a unique quality of work done in Krishna consciousness. So that's from Prabhupada's purport there, 240. And you can see Prabhupada quotes a verse, another three, chapter 3 also. Chapter 3, verse number 5. We can quickly have a look at that, see what Prabhupada has to say there. So the chapter, verse number five, it's about the soul, how the soul is always active. Everyone is forced to act helplessly due to the material, modes of material nature. And then Prabhupada quotes the verse, the full verse again in the purport. And he's talking about the soul. He said, if the soul is engaged in its natural function of Krishna consciousness, Whatever he is able to do is good for him. And he quotes a verse. So the purificatory process for reaching this point of Krishna consciousness, oh, to reach this point, the purificatory process is necessary for reaching this point of Krishna consciousness. And then he talks about how, he said, sannyas or any purificatory process is to help reach the goal of becoming Krishna conscious. So I was telling yesterday, Prabhupada gave sannyas to young men, give them the chance to do something for Krishna. And at the same time, Prabhupada knew it was going to be very difficult for them. He knew many of them were not so well qualified. But Prabhupada said, give them a chance to do some service for Krishna. And there's no loss. That's the point. But you may do, your material life may be so perfect, what do you gain? You don't gain anything. 
next life you don't know where you'll go. Okay, we'll go ahead. Results of following Varnashrama Dharma. From Srimad Bhagavatam, verse number 6 of the second chapter. Prabhupada says, someone can read? Can I read Maharaj? Yeah, go ahead, please. The animals, they have no regulative principles, but human society must follow regulative principles. That is called Varnashrama Dharma. So Varnashrama Dharma is also material, that is not spiritual. Mm -hmm. So Varnashram Dharma is not spiritual, it's material. But what is the purpose of following Varnashram Dharma? Sorry? What's the purpose of following Varnashram Dharma? It can help us to elevate to the spiritual level, the spiritual platform. That's right, that's the idea. It should help you to come to the spiritual platform. If it's not spiritual, but it should help us to to get detached from the material platform and come to the spiritual platform. So the, what's the, then Prabhupada explains the result of practicing Krishna consciousness. This is the, the same verse we were reading, chapter 2, verse number 40, where that verse is, uh, Svopam apyasya dharmasya chayate mahatopayat. The result of practicing Krishna consciousness is, Prabhupada states like this, a little advancement on this path can protect one from the most dangerous type of fear. What is that fear? Birth and death are really Yes. Suffering from diseases, birth old age. And, not just birth and death, but it, what's what kind of birth? Degradation into lower species of life. Right, yes. We may take birth in the lower species of life. You have to become a tree, stand as a tree with your foot stuck in the ground, and tolerate the wind and the rain and the heat and the cold. You have to become an animal, live in the forest, hunting, be, or being hunted. So, so many different species of life, very dangerous. So if we can make a little advancement, as Prabhupada said, one percent of Krishna consciousness will never be lost. We can go on from that point. So take it, we take advantage of this human life now to become a little practiced in Krishna consciousness that we can go on from this point. It's very important for us to understand how rare it is to get this opportunity, right? We know eight, eight, 84 lakh species of life and only 4 lakh are humans. But of the four lakh human species, there's only a few fortunate souls who get the association of devotees. Not everybody gets the association of devotees. Some of you are fortunate, you're born into Hindu dharma, Hindu families. Not everyone's so fortunate. Uh, Maharaj, I have a question. Yeah. Maharaj, it says like a little advancement on this path can protect one from the most dangerous types of fear. That means to become an animal or a lowest species. Then uh, my question is, Maharaj, uh, how is that possible? Even though Bharat Maharaj was self-realized soul, uh, 
is it also included in the consciousness at the time of leaving the body apart from a little advancement in well you, you you're saying the self real what did you say about the self realized soul uh manas i will repeat that question again the question is the even though bharat maharaj was a advanced self realized soul, not advanced i would say in the beginning a self realized soul but uh, because of his attachment to dear even though he was little advanced how is it possible that he became a dear in his next life Yes. Was that mean that like yeah? Well, Bharat Maharaj, we know that he was alone, away up there in Himalayas, up there by Ganduki, and he was there doing his spiritual practice. He had renounced everything, and he was on his own. But when he saved the life of that young deer, he allowed himself to become attached, and he became. very affectionate with the deer and all of his spiritual practices practically stopped everything was interrupted as he thought of the deer he would be doing his chanting or his meditation and but he'd be thinking of the deer where's the deer gone and so he became very much absorbed his mind became absorbed in that deer and it happened that one day he was there and he fell in the himalayas he fell down the mountain side lost his life and because his consciousness was so focused on the deer he had to take birth as a deer but because he was initially very advanced you know he was so advanced that he could give up being the emperor he could renounce everything family wealth and position to go to the himalayas to do renunciation because he had made a lot of advancement he could remember his past life so although he was in the body of a deer he could remember what had happened and he realized he could understand his mistake so while he was in the body of the deer he was very careful not he was very careful to he would go to places where sadhus were and he would eat the remnants of their food and he would be very careful not to get entangled again in other uh, kind similar situations so the re the result was quickly he gave up the body of the deer and next life he took birth in the brahmana family and then in the brahmana family also he was very careful not to get too entangled in the family affairs and he detached himself from that family so the advancement was stopped for some time but he didn't lose his advancement the advancement was just stopped so that's what happens it's not that he ever lost any of his advancement but it was stopped it was suspended for some time because he had to take that body of the deer so we see this also uh, other devotees like uh, ritasura uh, ritasura previous life was chitraketu and chitraketu was cursed by lord shiva's wife because he committed a minor offense to lord shiva and parvati was angry at him and she cursed chitraketu to take birth as a demon so he became the demon ritasura so although he was in the demon body he didn't lose his bhakti even though he was in the body of a demon he didn't lose his bhakti and when he was fighting with lord indra with indra indra was amazed at how this demon is such a devotee that he has so much devotion and he was speaking to indra about fighting and don't be attached to the body to do our duty it's all the arrangement of the lord <laughs> and indra was just amazed that this demon vritasura that he had such a demonic body but he had so much bhakti so bhakti is not lost whatever service we do it will be with us 
And so we see people who come to Krishna consciousness and who did a lot of service, but somehow they give up Krishna consciousness, somehow they get into some maya and they go out of Krishna consciousness. But that bhakti is, you know, that whatever progress they made, they, they don't lose it. And they will go on, they'll get the opportunity. Sometimes it comes later in life. We see some of the people who were sannyasis when they were young, later in life they come back, they come to Krishna consciousness and they pass the rest, the end of their life in the service of Krishna. And for other people it will be in the next life. Maybe not in this, if they don't come back in this life, the next life they'll come. They'll get the opportunity at least to take up Krishna consciousness. Is that all right, Prabhu? Yes, thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, Dandar Pranam, I have a question. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, Maharaj, uh, I'm just referring this to Prabhupada's course where he's saying, so Vanasham Dharma is also material, that is not spiritual. So how it is good for advancement? Then? Well, because you're working in the community, you're working in the society, that, that this community, remember this Varnashram, this is the arrangement of Lord Krishna. Krishna said, Chatur Varnam Maya Shristam Guna Karma Vibhag. I created this. Krishna said, I'm the creator of this, four divisions. So when we work in the Varnashram, we're following Lord Krishna's arrangement. So that in itself is purifying. Okay, Maharaj. Important for us. Prabhupada said, well, of course, now he said he can't really in reintroduce it. But our ISKCON society, we do what we want to show people how it can be very effective in organizing society. It's Krishna's own art plan to how how we should how people should be organized. The brahmanas, the intellectuals, the head, they're meant to guide materially and spiritually. And the kshatriyas are the leaders and the managers, and the vaishyas, the workers. And they're meant to earn and provide. And the sudras, the workers. And so everywhere in the world, these four divisions are there. Of course, things which are not there, you don't find things like vana prasta and sannyas. <laughs> these things are not there much. Vana prasta, people should retire. Some countries, like in USA, people work till they drop. They just keep working. They never retire. But people are meant to retire and retirement is not meant to sit and read the newspapers and watch television all day. Retirement is there so that you can take up full-time spiritual duties. So the Vedas say, pancha sorvam vanam brajit. From the age of 50, one should go to live in the forest. Or in, the, in the, this age you cannot go and live in the forest, but we can go to the holy places like Mayapur, Vrindavan, live there and live in the community of devotees and engage in some devotional activities. And this is a very good way to prepare because we have to prepare for the next life. Retirement is there because our body is getting old, we have to prepare for the next life. And the best way to prepare for the next life is by taking shelter of the Krishna conscious society. So when you follow these kinds of principles, you make advancement. You know, pe people, they like to become grihastas, that's good. Become a grihasta and have a family, that's very nice. But you don't remain like that, you don't, you shouldn't remain like, there's also Vanaprastha, 
successful householder life is when you move on into the Grihadvana Prastha Ashram, the retired ashram. Wife can also be there. You don't have to leave the wife. You don't have to leave the home. But there has to be full-time engagement in spiritual activities. Read scriptures, worship deities, do preaching programs, these kind of things. And if you find it difficult to do at home, then go to the Krishna conscious centers and stay there. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, we'll go ahead. Right, someone can read this. Please. He is also practicing Krishna consciousness. Activity in Krishna consciousness or acting for the benefit of Krishna without expectation of sense gratification is the highest transcendental quality of work. Even a small beginning of such activity finds no impediment, no can that small beginning be lost at any stage. Wait, there's a bit more. Yes, go ahead. Work in Krishna Consciousness carries a person again to Krishna Consciousness even after the loss of the body. At least one is sure to have a chance in the next life of being born again as a human being. That will give one a further chance for elevation. 2.40 per foot. Yes. Yeah. As Prabhupada said here, he said, even a small beginning of such activity finds no impediment. Mm. That small, nor can that small beginning be lost. Of course, some impediments, you may say, well, my family, they're, they're not favorable, they're against it. <laughs> but the, the activity itself is actually very powerful and it's very beneficial for us in terms of the future life. Okay, we have an exercise for you. Under what circumstances following Varnashram Dharma is necessary? How many people are here today, Yagna Prabhu? Uh, today is uh, 17, Maharaj. 17. Okay, so uh, how many groups will we have? We can have groups of groups of four and one of five five groups huh? four, groups, four four sixteen okay four groups yeah four groups of four oh four group three groups of four and one of five seventeen right that's question one and question two what are the qualifications required for being? <coughs> Sorry? Qualifications required. Give references from Bhagavad Gita and you've got four verses to work with. Give supportive references. 231, 35, 326 and 335. So you have to be able to... Can I open the room, Maharaj? Yeah, has everybody understood what you have to do? Yes? Make a note of these four verses and you have to give evidence, give the reference from these verses if you're quoting something. So, what circumstances is following Varnashram necessary and what's the qualification to begin Krishna Consciousness. Okay? So four groups. Yes, open the group.
Krishna Maharaj, Hare Krishna Prabhu, Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna. There were only two questions, really. So we are not going to do the third question. Sorry? Third was the verses, Prabhu. Third was just the reference. Yeah. Okay. Under what circumstances falling for national government is necessary? Yes, you want to read these verses carefully. Read these four purports and pick out what's relevant. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, do we need to answer both the questions or we have to just uh, yes, concentrate on? Yes, you have to answer both the questions. Why? The, uh, what when, when, when do we follow Vanashram? And who's, what, what's, who's qualified to take up Krishna consciousness? You have to read these four purports, first of all, right? There were four verses given. Archana? Yes, Gurudev. Do you have the list, the four verses? Yes, Gurudev. No. 3.31, 3.5, 3.26 and 3.35. Okay. So all of the four people in your group, they all have to read these verses um, and then pick, okay. pick out what's going to answer the two questions. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. I've understood. paragraph? Yes, yes, it's the last paragraph which starts with there are two kinds of swadharmas. And after that it says as long as one is not liberated one has to perform the duties of this particular body. I think that can be considered as a circumstance under which we have to perform the duties. Yes. So we take something from this and we go to the next verse. Yes, yes. Go to 3 5. 3 5 is saying everyone is forced to act helplessly according to the qualities he has acquired from the modes of material nature. Therefore, one can refrain. Some people take up to Brahmachari uh, in ISKCON itself and they are following Brahmacharyam and then uh, they are into Krishna consciousness. 
like that. Bharat Prabhu, is it making sense, Prabhu? Yes, Mataji. Yeah. We can add on. Can we add the example of Amrish Maharaj also that he was living in his Grihas life uh, yes. and doing every kind of spiritual activities, uh, being a uh, king even. Yes, if yes. He was a king, he has a so many responsibility for his uh, uh, praja, but then also he, is, uh, he was doing uh, so many spiritual activities. Yes, 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 definitely. Because all the four, eight, nine limbs of activities he was doing. So, Savai Manapum Sab, Padara Vidyo. So, that one we can say Amrish Maharaj example, how he is engaging all his senses in, in the activities of the Lord in spite of being a Kshatriya king. Okay, so shall we move to the next point? Next point is uh, what is the next point? What are the qualifications required for beginning principles of Krishna consciousness? Um, beginning practice of Krishna consciousness, okay. So, uh, like I think following our regulative principles for I think that is the best. Yeah, yeah, Prabhu. Uh, but beginning practice of Krishna consciousness, uh, feel shra- um, Reading literature, reading. Uh, yeah, Shravanam, Shravanam and Kirtanam, right? Be- Kirtanam. So I don't know if they are the qualifications, but at least uh, um, maybe we can look at some purpose or knowledge. 3.26, I will just have a look what is mentioned. So as not to disturb the minds of air, I should induce them to not be working, and we should engage them in one's actual development as well. Each of them have their own prescribed duties to perform. It's very necessary to. That's what I got from the first text, 2.31. So for 3.5, I think it is uh, clearly mentioning about that a soul, we cannot refrain ourselves from doing nothing. Right? We always have to engage ourselves in some kind of activity. Yes, So we should move to the second question? Yes, yes, I think we should move to the second question. Like what is the qualification to take a Krishna consciousness? <laughs> like as the arms. Yeah. I've been reading 3.26 for a while. But uh, it is about you know, it's somewhere or the other it is about uh, like how a realized soul should take a Krishna consciousness it's some, some word about that 3.35 3.35 when it talks about uh, how it is important it's better to discharge one's own prescribed duties even though faultly then to do others duty imperfect, like you know, perfectly so basically 
destruction in the course of performing one's own duties better than engaging others. I think this one also be related to the first, first question. question. Yes, all yeah. four are related to the first question. Yeah. Qualifications required. This something yeah. you can do. <laughs> For Krishna consciousness, I don't think so. There is really Any a qualification. Because Maha, Mahaprabhu came here and gave freely, right? That exactly. Because that, that's what we've been that's saying all the time. Yeah. Yes. Like, there's no qualification defined. required. Like, one doesn't have to be born in a, uh, like a Brahmana family or a Kshatriya family. Yes. Uh, he just needs to be, he or she just needs to be uh, serious about what he's doing. Like, following the regulative principles. Uh, the four regulating principles and uh, following the instructions of your Guru Maharaj or uh, yeah. your Shiksha Guru. Right. Following the instruction of a Sahadu or Guru. And, and following the instructions of scriptures that uh, that is being given by our great Acharyas. Yes. Is that, is, that is the right way to approach. Correct, Prabhu. I think for the second question is very direct. We can just... Uh, I think the text in Bhagavad Gita is all explaining, referring to the question number one. Yeah, the question number one. It all refers to Varnashara Madharma. Krishna and Krishna Prabhu and Janardhan Prabhu are here, I believe. Yeah, but I think the internet is having some trouble. Oh, okay. So you can Prabhu, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. From 3.35, it's just perfect. Like, why Krishna is mentioning this? Because Arjuna is trying to, you know, not do his duty and try to take up Brahman. He's like, he's, he wants to irritate, like, he wants to go and beg, right? So, right. Use this example also. Why it is Krishna is directly saying that it's better to take one's prescribed duties, um, even though it's some fault, than to just imitate or take up someone else's. So, that completely. Right, Mataji. So, Mataji, can you repeat again? I couldn't catch you. Hare Krishna, Mataji, can you repeat again? I couldn't catch you. Are you able to see the purport on 335? It's yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So I'm just I'm just giving the example of Arjuna, um, how he wants to. He says that it's better to, um, like you know, instead of fighting, it's better to live off by begging. So that's not really his duty, right? So he's okay. giving an example over here. But I think the last paragraph in 335 says, once we come to the transcendental platform and fully Krishna consciousness like state, then a Kshatriya may act as a Brahmana, a Brahmana may act as a Kshatriya. So in that stage, like, you know, I don't think you really, it, does, it doesn't matter if you are necessarily like following the word national. I think that is, and there's an example given of Vishwamitra originally being a Kshatriya and then he acted as a Brahmana, Whereas Parshurama, who was a Brahmana, who acted as Shatriya. So that stage is only reached once you are fully situated in Krishna consciousness. Okay, Prabhu, I think, I think it's just, oh. Hare Krishna, Yagna Prabhu. Yagna Prabhu, Hare Krishna. Uh, Ji Maharaj. I, I think it's just about enough time. I think we could close the room. Yes, yes Maharaj.
Ok, okay. thank you. Yes, bring everybody up. Okay, everybody's back. Okay, very good. So, we like to let's start with group number maybe group number 4 could begin first. We were saying that for a society to function very well, the Varnasrama Dharma is very important. Uh, this is because each of them have their own prescribed duties to perform. If they didn't follow, I mean, if we are not following the Varnasrama Dharma, it will be the society will not prosper. Meaning that they will not be or anything they do, like the whole society will be like in, uh, how to say, in dilemma. So, uh, as a soul, we can stay from, uh, we cannot stay away from inactivity, not even for a moment. So, thus, as a soul, we should be engaged in some kind of service. So, if, if we are not engaged in devotional service, at least we should be engaged in doing, uh, performing our prescribed duties uh, properly. Uh, this is also stated in the Gita. So, uh, okay. an example if, it, that if it's stated somewhere, I'd like to hear it. You should... You should, when you, when you speak, it's very good if you quote, you tell us where it's said in the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, this is said uh, in 3.5 uh, Maharaj, text 3, I uh, mean chapter 3, text 5. In the purport or in the text? In the text. You can read it. Uh, So everyone is uh, text five. Nay hai kastit sanam api jatu pistati akarma krit argyate hai avasa karma sarva prakti jay gunay. So uh, the translation for this: Everyone is forced to act helplessly according to the qualities he has acquired from the modes of material nature. Therefore, no one can refrain from doing something, not even for a moment. All right. So, what's your point? Uh, my point was that as a soul, we can't stay away from inactivity, not even for a moment. Thus, we should be engaged in uh, devotional service uh, as a devotee. But if you are not a devotee, then we should at least be engaged in our prescribed duties based on our Varna Samadharma. As a Krishna conscious person, we should be engaged in uh, devotional service. Since the soul cannot uh, remain inactive, I mean, without performing any kind of uh, Mm. 
was my point, Maharaj. So uh, the example I would like to give uh, was uh, there was in text three, I mean chapter three, text thirty-five. So it is uh, the translation for this. It is far better to discharge one's discharge with this, even though partly than another's duties perfectly. Destruction, destruction in the course of performing one's own duty is better than engaging in another's duty, for to follow another's path is dangerous. So. Uh, Based on this, the example that I would like to give is that there was uh, Arjuna was saying that it is better to uh, beg instead of fighting, but that is not the duty of the player because the to beg is the duty of a uh, Brahmana. So uh, I think as a Satriya, he should fight. So uh, this uh, text is uh, referring to that it is far better to perform our own duty rather than uh, doing uh, others duty. So following that path can be dangerous. So you so for you're saying following Varnashram is necessary. Yes, it's necessary, Maharaj. That is what I'm trying to conclude. And uh, and this is for everybody, is it? Uh, only only for the one in the uh, Varnashram Adharma, but for a devotee, he transcends all this. It it is not necessarily for him to follow this Varnashram Adharma. Uh, an example uh, I would like to use here is that, like Parasuram, he was a Brahmana, but then uh, when it's necessary, he became like a Satya, he fought with the kings. So for a devotee, he, he is able to uh, do other duties, perform, because he will be acting under Krishna consciousness. So what about Arjuna? Is he not a devotee? He, he Krishna he said he's a devotee. Yes, Maharaj, he is a devotee, uh, but uh, at that moment, Krishna wants him to fight. <laughs> so, Krishna, Arjuna is a devotee, and he wants to beg, you, and you give example, somebody was a, a Kshatriya and became a Brahmana, and so Arjuna is a Kshatriya, he can also become a Brahmana. But then, uh, at that moment, uh, uh, Krishna wanted him to, uh, to fight. Okay, Krishna wants him to fight. So Krishna's authority is absolute. Absolute. So uh, Arjuna is a devotee, so he doesn't really need to follow Varnashram. Yes. Not necessarily to follow Varnashram for him. But he was following at that moment due to Krishna's order. And Krishna instructs him. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so long as one is not a devotee, they have to follow Varnashram. But there are some people who are outside of Varnashram, right? Yes, yes, my right. So, what about them? people who is outside of Varnasram, uh, you mean that, are you referring to the devotees or? No, people no, I mean pe people like, uh, people like uh, Malachas, you know, they're not, they're not in the Varnasram, they're just Malachas. So, do they follow Varnashram? No, they do not follow uh, Varnashram. But if they don't follow uh, Varnashram, then they will be uh, affected by the sinful reaction. Okay. Yes, it's very necessary to follow the Varnashram. But if they are not following, then they will be entangled in this material world and they will be committing a lot of sinful reactions, sinful, uh, accumulating a lot of sinful reactions. If they don't follow? Yes. 
Okay, let's hear from another group. Group three. Hare Krishna Maharaj, that is Pranam. I am going to be present from Group 3. So, like our first question, under what circumstances, avoid word national term is necessary? So, uh, word national term is necessary like a human civilization begins from word national. To become a human, we must follow a word national. Uh, like uh, in the Papa 2.31, it is given, like there are two kinds of soil term, specific basis. So like we are not liberated, so we need to follow one national term to get to the state of liberation uh, on the material platform. Once we are liberated, the other sub harm comes the fish conversion. Then we uh, become elevated to the spiritual path, that is high fish consciousness activity. So uh, like as you, as we were discussing about Malaysia, so first Malaysians have to become human beings. They are not even human beings, they are like a two leg animal. So, so they need to follow or take the signs of one national term and as specified in Shastras to become a human being so that they can elevate to the path of liberation then they can become also eligible to practice spiritual practices in Krishna consciousness. And also like uh, so one national term is necessary uh, uh, to perform our duties because nobody can remain vacant. One needs to perform the duty throughout his life in the end of that is death. So we must uh, keep engaged in our one national term as this guide in Shastra and we will also act as a stepping stone for our spiritual advance. And we have few examples uh, for the one national term like Amrish Maharaj being a Grasta, he followed all his uh, uh, material activities uh, means all the engagement of the team duties and also was a first class at devotee of Lord Krishna and Arjuna, he also uh, was a Kshatriya and a best devotee of Lord Krishna. He performed both his duties simultaneously, perfectly. Um, being a Kshatriya and also fighting on the battlefield. Also served the Lord Krishna by fighting against the uh, Kauravas. Now coming to the next uh, question, like, what is the qualification? No, 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 I just want to hear about this one, about Va Vaishna, first one. I want to hear the first question first. Okay, so you, you're saying malachas, malachas, they, what do they need to do? Like uh, they need to follow the one national term to become a human being. As Prabhupada Ji also said that like uh, first we must become a human being. So what, they, they, what do they have to do to become human beings? Uh, they want to follow like as uh, defined shasta one national term like the four one four ashram like Brahman, Shatriya, Vaishya, Shudra. So like uh, in Kali Yuga we said that all Ashudra, nobody, nobody is following. But still as per the shasta we need to act according to that. We need to follow our prescribed duties like a uh, Brahman should do the activities of Bhavana and Shatriya should do. But now as we see in the present scenario all Shudras have become king. They are ruling the world, but it is defined for only Kshatriyas to rule, but Pe Shudras are doing that. People are very critical of this Varnashram. They say it's very unfair, that there's no equality there, there's no rights for people. Yes, Maharaj And uh, therefore, like uh, Prabhupada Ji has banned from America, the, the all over Malaysia, there. So they were not eligible for anything, but uh, the mercy of Prabhupada and the association of Prabhupada converted them into a pure devotee and make them chant to Hare Krishna. Like uh, uh, Pripa Siddhi, like Prabhupada Ji gave the mercy to them and gave him an association full time 24 to 7 to all the surroundings of the people over there. So they get purified from the inner souls by the association of Prabhupada and Prabhupada chanting. So all the asso association made them in convert to into a chapter. Like a, from a two-leg animal to two-leg chapter. Yeah. Eligible for the one national to as well as for the three. How did Mahatma Gandhi do it? You know, he was also, he was like, he wanted to bring up the, he talk, talked about the untouchables, you know, there were people and they called them the untouchables and how did, what did you do about them? What was Gandhi's program? Like Mahatma Gandhi was on the material platform. He was not a Krishna-centered, Krishna-consciousness-centered. 
Well, Varnashram Dharma is also material. Ah, I agree, Maharaj, that is material, but like uh, our uh, aim of following Varnashram Dharma is to progress in spiritual life, not to, to only pro elevate to the material plane. The main motto of following Varnashram Dharma is to become a uh, devotee. So he wants a uh, uh, peace in the world, Mahatma Gandhi, but do, do you have any do you have any quote about that the the main like, the main some quote about Mahatma Gandhi, like, no you got any quote about following Varnashram Dharma is to become devotee and, Maharaj, to become a devotee nothing is essential or the association of a, a pure devotee is necessary to become a devotee but to maintain our life to be to perform our daily duty Varnashram Dharma is necessary Mm. We total, if we are becoming a devotee, we are automatically following the one nation. But uh, if we are following one nation, it doesn't become necessary that we become a devotee. Yes, that's true. Yeah, people may follow Varnashram, they may not be devotees. Yes, Maharaj. But devotees, they both. We automatically incorporate that quality. We we do follow Varnashram. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. Good. Let's go on group number two. Hare Krishna. Yes, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I represent one half of our group. Uh, so this point was already mentioned. It is given in text two point thirty one per quote that as long as one is not liberated, one has to perform the duties. Uh, as prescribed and um, according to the particular priority that has been given. And uh, what, only one has one to one perform is, what duties? One has to perform duties of his particular body in accordance with religious principles in order to achieve liberation. And only when one is liberated, then his swadharma or specific duty becomes spiritual, and after that, it is no longer in a material concept. And so, can you tell me exactly what duties they have to perform then on the when they're in the material platform? Uh, then we can, uh, then that can be supported in large with, uh, uh, sorry, I forgot the words. Uh, then that can be supported in large with which says that one has to perform duties according to their own qualities and not somebody else's qualities. So. Uh, is will that be a right answer to this question? I want I want to know more about these duties. I don't know. I mean, people may say, my, "Well, my duty is to play football. My duty is to play cricket." You know. Oh, well, uh, then, uh, but but the reason to follow Varnashram Dharma is to go to a higher level. Or, and attain liberation. So our duties, whatever we perform, should be in accordance with that. With the, in accordance with what? In uh, in a way that it uh, leads us to the higher platform of self-realization. So we have to perform, uh, whatever duties we perform, we should also keep Krishna in the center of it and perform mm -hmm. our duties and gradually uh, cleanse. Well, well, you want to put Krishna in the center, of that's, that, that's a, a big thing, you know. Not everybody's going to be able to do that. Right. We're talking about something else, right? Yes. I wanted to hear more about, you know, that the duties, what particular duties, you, you know, you. You, I just want you to identify, you know, what's the program, what duties, uh, what are these duties? How do we understand a person's duty? According to one's quality? Yeah, but it has to be guided by what? What's the system? Varnashram, right? It's going to be right. according to Varnashram Dharma. One should be guided, different duties, the four varnas, the four ashrams. There are different duties, different occupations for people according to their varna and their ashram. Right. 
So that has to be recognized. I just wanted you to, you know, you, you were quoting, but there was no mention of Varnashram. And I just wanted you to say Varnashram. You were reading from maybe Bhagavad Gita, and, but there was no mention of Varnashram. I just wanted to hear that this is Varnashram, that these duties are there according to Varnashram. Yes. The four Varnas, they per, have particular duties, particular occupations. Right. Brahmachari, Brahmachari's duty is studying, student life, then Grihastha life, Grihastha life. You maintain the family, work. People do some kind of work according to the Varnas. And then Vanaprastha, retired, sannyas, renounced. So these different duties are there. And so this is for people on the material platform, right? Yes. So how do we know when one is actually then ready for the spiritual platform? Uh, then if, but if one uh, transcends the modes of material nature and is fully situated in Krishna consciousness. So I think if we then, like you mentioned, if one is able to put Krishna in the center of everything, then I think there is no need to. If one is able to put Krishna in the center, if one is actually what? If he's able to transcend the material nature. And is fully situated in Krishna consciousness. Then there's no need to practice for Nashra, right? Yes, and they can then uh, do everything under the direction of a bona fide spiritual master. Oh, okay, yes, right. Well, they may have a bona fide, they may have a spiritual master, but the spiritual master may not be bona fide. He may just simply be some seminal guru. Or he may be some Mayavadi guru. They may have the spiritual master. And the impersonalists and Brahmavadis, you know, the Vedantists, they also have their spiritual masters. Not everybody will have a, a Vaishnava spiritual master. But, they, but that's okay. They follow the spiritual master under some guidance. Yeah, good. Okay, anything else about this point, about Varnashram? Uh, yes, Natalie, you say something? No, sorry, Mark, Mark, you can continue. I'll ask later on. I have a question. Yeah. Um, oh. who, who, who has a question? Marge, about the Malikshas, like there are some people who don't even follow Varnashram or don't even have the concept or idea about Varnashrama, like far away, they're far away from it. So is there any other way for them to advance or like, like you mentioned about Malikshas, so they're, they don't really fall under it. So what about them, Maharaj? Yes, what about them? Well, that's what, we have programs like Food for Life, you know, give them prasadam, and, and we have uh, program. we have temples, people can come to the temple, see the deities, and they get some pure, they get purification in that way. We try to give them mercy, we try to change them. It's not so easy to change people. Uh, we had the program, you know, our land at Juhu, at Juhu Temple, the Juhu Temple in Mumbai. There were people, there were tenants on the land. So we purchased the land and we t Prabhupada told the tenants, he said that you become devotees and we, you don't need to pay any rent. We won't take any rent from you. If you, you can stay here and you don't. Uh, but we just want you to follow the four principles and to become devotees, you know, take up Krishna consciousness. But they said, oh, no, no, we're not going to do that. No, no, we don't want that. 
So gradually, you know, gradually they moved out and some people we had to give them money to get them out. Like, like that, we couldn't do much, you know, but Prabhupada tried, he gave them the opportunity. And of course, untouchables, the Harijans and the Malachas, these people, what can be done about them? Well, we try to give them mercy, as I said, prasadam, try to encourage them to chant. But they have to change, they have to agree to follow the principles. And that's not easy for people like that. When they come from that background, sometimes it's very difficult for them to strictly follow these principles. You know, in the West, we see also in the West, people even talk about it, that the, if they have to give up meat, fish and eggs and intoxication and gambling and illicit sex, they think, what's the purpose of living? They think their life is ruined. So, people are in the bodily concept very strongly and they're so much attached to their sinful activities, they can't give them up. But we do try. Sometimes we do get some rare souls who will change, take up Krishna consciousness. But it's a difficult task, a difficult task. We try to engage them. Try to give them some work in Krishna consciousness. So Maharaj, then to be born as a miksha is also a kind of degradation in life, right? Like if we don't follow properly, then we might also degrade, like to be born in a lower... Yes, of course, it's bad karma to take birth in a family like that. In that situation, it's not good karma. But at the same time, if they're born in India, just the fact that they've taken birth in India, that's good. You know, we see Hanuman. No, Hanuman's a monkey. But, you know, look, he's a very great devotee. And Garuda's a bird. And Garuda eats fish and snakes. But Garuda's a great devotee. So, you have to be very careful about condemning people. So, even their activities, they may have some sin like that. But, if they're willing to do service, just like Garuda and Hanuman, they do great service on behalf of the Lord. So, we cannot criticize them. Rather, we should worship them, we praise them. Because they're great devotees. So don't just see the faults, but see what they, they see the good if they're doing some actual good. And so if people can, can do some if they're willing to give some service to Krishna, it's for their greatest benefit. Mm -hmm. So the same is true with these malachas and people from low levels of society. You know, Prabhupada said about Africans. When Prabhupada went to Africa, Prabhupada was telling, he said, this is the land of thieves. <laughs> Anybody who lived in Africa, they, they probably know, they have the experience, you know. That there's a lot of thieves there. I mean, thieves are everywhere today, everywhere. Where can you go where there's no thieves? You know, but it was especially prominent there in Africa. But still, by Krishna consciousness, we see some wonderful devotees coming from there. Very nice people. And so, we, we don't, you, you, can't, you can't kill a dog just because he has a, we have a saying, you can't kill a dog just because he has a bad name. You have to look, the behavior, what are the symptoms, what, you know, someone may be Harijan, he may be Malaysia from Bangi colony, or he lives in the slum, but you have to see what are their activities. You know, Haridas Thakur was living in a cave. So don't condemn a person just because he's living in the, in the slum. 
we have to see their, their consciousness, their like, behavior. That's the point. So Varnashram Dharma is there to organize society and as we had, they should come to the human platform. They have to be civilized humans. They have to be humans, not animals. That's the idea. And so when people are situated in a particular varna or ashram, then it's very powerful, very purifying for them. And they know, you know, somebody's a, a brahmachari, they know later on they're going to go on to the next ashram, they, they understand. And the guru will tell them about their nature, what kind of work they should be doing. The guru knows who's going to be a brahman. He can guide them and direct them. So it's not whimsical. You know, nowadays what happens, people go and study, nobody guides them, nobody tells them what they should. You know, they, they go, to, they go and, and then they go for a job and they're just thinking, how much will you pay? They don't... And, People go, and people of course want to go to foreign countries, they want to go to foreign countries, get more money, they think prestigious, all of these things. The, the, the whole Varnashram Dharma is not there. People, people are not thinking about Varnashram Dharma, any duty. So the future is not clear. There was a one Bengali couple, uh, they were, the man was a doctor in America and his wife's very nice devotee and she was worshipping Radha and Krishna and they, they, somehow they met devotees and then Janani Vas Prabhu was cultivating them and he was preaching to them and they became very pure and surrendered and they gave all their savings to Krishna consciousness, to Mayapur for the service of the deities and they gave it, even a house they had in Alipur they gave it for a temple. And so, you know, they, that was very, they didn't have any children, of course, so they gave everything for Krishna. Okay, we didn't hear from the first group, right? Group number one. Group number one. Yes? Who's it? Guru Maharaj, can you hear me? Okay, yes. Oh, look, if there's going to be all that background noise, it's no good. Can you get a quiet place to talk to us? Is it better now? Yes. The previous speakers have already quoted a lot. Uh, from the verse to 31 and um, the question is under what circumstances following a Varnashram Dharma is necessary and if we are on the bottom of the platform of course we have to follow Varnashram Dharma and even uh, it is said that the great souls they, they don't need to follow them but uh, still uh, uh, the, thing, the point is maybe under the all circumstances <laughs> we have to follow we need to follow the national Dharma because even Krishna, he followed it as showing, for showing the example to us. And great persons in Krishna consciousness, they also fulfill their duties, uh, trying to show us the example, the right example. Okay. Yes, Lord Chaitanya followed. Lord Chaitanya was a strict sannyasi, previously been a grihasta. He was a very strict grihasta. So he followed Varnashram, he respected Varnashram, Lord Krishna also had great respect for the Brahmanas, Lord Krishna also shows it, as you said, followed Varnashram. All right, maybe you can tell us, Kirtida, what is the qualification required to practice Krishna consciousness? Actually, Mataji Arjuna wanted us to answer this question. May she? Yeah. No, group. Thank you very much. So I'm working on the second question. Yes. Okay. The qualification it should be uh, maybe through the food safe activity or uh, in regulation, uh, sense gratification regulated. 
by Vedic ritual that can elevate uh, one to Krishna consciousness. That can be one point. We take this from uh, the purport of Sila Prabhupada from chapter 3.26. Can you read it to me? Uh, yes, good. Through fruitive activities and sense uh, gratification regulated by the Vedic ritual, one is gradually elevated to Krishna consciousness. So that what we understand from this. Well, that, that will uh, that will be very gradual. That will be very gradual. Usually, we don't come to Krishna consciousness like that. I mean, I never did. Did you do it? Did you do very rituals before you became a devotee? Um, not really. Ah, not right. Really. Yeah, right. Yeah. Do you know anybody who did? Did any of your sisters do? No. <laughs> no. Maybe no. No, right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Alright, let's hear somebody else. Group number three. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, like uh, uh, in action, actually we need no qualification to become a Krishna consciousness. Uh -huh. so, uh, no, no such uh, qualification is required. Anybody can become Krishna consciousness. Really? Yes, Maharaj. If we have uh, got an association or met with a devotee, that's a start our spiritual account, opens our spiritual account. Well, that's something, isn't it? Isn't that a qualification? You said no. You said no qualification. Huh? Uh, as there are 20, 84 lakh species, so among them, human life is only uh, <clears throat> in which we can draw elevate to the Krishna consciousness. We can understand the Krishna who is Krishna, and uh, but not a dog or any other. Animal can understand. In progress in Bhakti human life is a boon for us. Well, that's not true. Shivananda Singh gave mercy to the dog. Uh, that's a, like, Maharaj, that's a rare case, like a uh, one out of hundred. Well, you. Not every dog becomes a Krishna consciousness. Um, because because not every man is Shivananda Singh. Yes, Maharaj. But if there's the mercy of the devotee, just like you said, a devotee becomes, somebody becomes a devotee, how did they become a devotee? How did they do it? Mm. You by said, mercy, by, the mer mercy by the mercy of a, a great soul, right? So the same way the dog gets the mercy of a great soul, they can also, they, they can make advancement. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Let's hear another group. Number two, group two. Uh, so, like the other two speakers said, uh, there is no qualification. It all depends on. It of course depends on the mercy of devotees and all. And uh, in connection to Anashram Dharma and Krishna consciousness, in three point twenty six purport. It says that even a slightly developed Krishna conscious person may directly be engaged in the service of the Lord without waiting for other Vedic formulas. So, uh, that is one thing, Maharaj. And what, another is that. What is this? It can be directly engaged in the service of the Lord. Yes. Without waiting for what? For other Vedic formulas. What is that? What are these other Vedic formulas? Uh, this is in connection to uh, text 26. So, uh, whatever duties are prescribed according to the Varnashram Dharma, it says uh, that these are Vedic formulas. So, you do not, one does not have to follow these if we are even, if we are developed in Krishna consciousness and engaged in, the, in Krishna consciousness. Okay. We don't have to do, just like uh, someone, you know, when there's a death in the family, then you want to do some shrad, you know, every year you do the shrad ceremony in their honor or something. 
So one time, there was one devotee in, he was from Manipur, he was a, became a Bhakti Swarup Damodar Goswami, Bhakti Swarup Damodar Goswami. His samadhi is there in Radhakund. But he was a, a early disciple of Srila Prabhupada. And he was with Prabhupada in Los Angeles and he got a telegram from India saying his father had died. And so he said to Prabhupada, I will have to go back to Manipur to do the last rites and to do all the ceremonies for my father. But Prabhupada told him, no, he said, you don't have to do that. He said, you're already finished with that. He said, you've already finished with all that. You don't need to do that. Of course, he was a brahmachari, he became a sannyasi, he became a guru, spiritual master. But Prabhupada told him, you don't have to do these things, this is material. And somebody else who was a grihasta, of course they would usually do it, material things, material ceremonies. Grihastas, they do these kind of things, but brahmacharis, sannyasis, they don't get involved in these kind of rituals. Too much. Okay, so the Vedic formulas are not necessary for somebody if they've already got a taste and, or made a, some progress in Krishna consciousness. They don't have to worry about the different Vedic rituals. You know, so many different rituals in the Vedas, worshipping the forefathers and offering oblations and doing Agnihotri fire sacrifice every day and so many other things. So not required if one is already situated firmly in Krishna consciousness. But to begin the practice of Krishna consciousness, who can do it? Harini Saki. Are you going to, are you going to open the door to everybody? I don't know, Maharaj. <laughs> we can try our best. So anybody who can get the association, the mercy of great soul, they can start, Maharaj. Anybody who wants to come, they can come, yeah? Yes, Maharaj. Open the door for everyone. But, but anybody who wants to come, they can come to the temple, and they can attend the program, right? Although in the Bhagavad Gita you see in the 18th chapter Krishna says that this is only that Krishna consciousness is not for those who are envious and who are not devotees and like that. So do we let anybody come to our Krishna conscious program? You know there's people living next door at Abek, they're Muslims, do you let them come? We give them prasadam, Maharaj. Okay, but would you, would you let them sit in the class and hear the... Yeah. Yes, of yeah. course, yeah, we would. So long as they don't disturb the main qualification, they shouldn't create any disturbance. If somebody comes and they want to do their own preaching, you know, if somebody comes and starts to say, this is nonsense, you should come and join us, you should become a Muslim, be like us, don't be you, you know. They know, okay, you have to go get out, you know. So sometimes people come, some Christians come and they want to challenge. So that, that's not good. We don't like that. We don't let these kind of people come. If they want to come, they have to listen. They have to be willing to listen. And if they want to live in the temple, then what's required? They need to follow the regulated principles. Yes, they have to follow regulated and they, and they have to chant 16 rounds. Otherwise they can't live in the temple, Prabhupada said. They have to follow regulated, four regulated principles and chant 16 rounds. Otherwise, can't live in the temple. That's the standard. Okay. Okay, group number one, this question, qualification for beginning Krishna consciousness? Uh, it's by the mercy. That's right. That's what we understand. Yes, we understand. By, we, we come to Krishna consciousness by the mercy. 
we get bhakti from somebody who's got bhakti. Somebody has to give us the bhakti to get bhakti. And so qualification for beginning the practice, that we're, we, we have a genuine desire to become Krishna conscious. Somebody should yeah. want, want to become. Do we also say Sadra Guru Maharaj? What? Sadra, faith. Oh, Shraddha, faith. Well, faith, you can, cre you can develop the faith. They may not have, they should have a little faith and even before faith, they need to have association because they will get the faith by proper association. So even before the faith, there will be good sadhu sangha, association. That will give them the faith. If they get good association, they will develop the faith. So they have to be willing to take association. That's the idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll go ahead. Prabhupada's quote. Somebody can read. Archana, read. Okay, I can try. Uh, Varnasham Dharma. On the bodily plan, Seva. Uh, Seva. Swa, swa dharma. Swa dharma is called Varnasham Dharma or man's stepping stone for spiritual understanding. Human civilization begins from the state of Varnasham Dharma. Right. Human civilization begins from Varnasham Dharma. Go ahead, read more, Archana. As long as one is not liberated, one has to perform the duties of his particular body in accord, accordance, 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 I don't know, with a uh, regulation, uh, with religion's principle in order to achieve liberation. When one is liberated, one's swat, uh, swat dharma specific duty becomes spiritual and it is uh, and it's not in the material bodily concept. Mm. So as long as we're not liberated, we have to follow Varnashram. Right? And, and when do you become liberated? What about devotees? And, are you liberated? trying to become liberated, right? So Swadharma, our duty, specific duty, becomes spiritual. And so when we're liberated, then our duty is chanting and hearing and serving Krishna. That is the, that is the Swadharma on the spiritual level. But on the material level, we're following Vanashram. We have some occupation, go to work, and the job, teacher, so many things. Okay, Prabhupada explains. Read more. Harini Saki Maharaj, please read. Yes, Maharaj. Uh, Krishna consciousness. A slightly developed Krishna conscious person may directly be engaged in the service of the Lord without waiting for other Vedic formulas. For this fortunate man, there is no need to follow the Vedic rituals because by direct Krishna consciousness, one can have all results one would otherwise derive from following one's prescribed duties. 3.26 per point. Okay. So by direct Krishna consciousness, you get all the results of all the, the Varnashram, of following Varnashram, you get everything. Just by being Krishna conscious, as you said, Devotees, we follow Varnashram, but we don't think about it. We don't think, oh, I'm doing following Varnashram. No, but it's, it's actually, it's just there within Krishna consciousness. Varnashram is there. So everything comes by Krishna consciousness.
Yes, hari ini. So Kira-kira. at the present moment, there is no possibility of persons following the principles of Varna Shama Dharma, either here or anywhere. Everyone is Varna Shankara, Kalau Shudra Sambhava. In this age, everyone is a Shudra. Nobody is a Brahmana. Nobody is Kshatriya. Nobody is Vaishya. Shudra. So in this age, you won't find anybody following the Varna Shama Dharma. <laughs> We won't find anybody following. Everybody is Sudra. We're saying, no, I'm Brahmana. <laughs> we're all Sudra. Kalo Sudra Sambhava. This is from the Shastra. We're all condemned. Go ahead, Harini. Now you cannot again introduce the system of Varnashrama. It is not possible. But if one takes to Krishna consciousness, automatically he becomes immediately a Brahmana and above the Brahmana. A Vaishnava is above the Brahmana, Bhagavad Gita 318 to 13. Hmm. So immediately becomes a Brahmana because a Vaishnava is above the Brahmana. So you don't have to be a Brahmana, just become a devotee. A devotee, Brahmana will be a Brahmana. A devotee means a Brahmana. All right, let's look over what we talked about today, the different points. First of all, the appearance of Krishna, Lord Krishna's mission in coming in the world to establish dharma, to establish religious principles. Then the ultimate principle of dharma from the Bhagavad Gita to surrender to Krishna, to give up all religion which is materially motivated and to surrender to Krishna. That's the highest principle of dharma. And then, what is sanatana dharma? Sanatana dharma means, who remembers? To be an eternal servant of Lord Krishna. Eternal uh, religion. Servant of Lord Krishna. Okay, yeah. So, that is a constitutional position. So here's something we didn't really do. What about the results of following Varnasham dharma compared to the results of sanatana dharma. And if, who can offer some point on this? The result of following Varnashram dharma, is it the same as what you get by following sanatana dharma? Huh? Is Varnashrama dharma is material? Varnashrama dharma is material? Varnashrama dharma. And the result of it is uh, it is finished. What? Sanata Dharma is what? I can't hear you, Kirtida. And, uh, the results of Sanatana Dharma, they won't finish. Don't perish. They will still You're not clear. Your voice is not clear. Your voice is not clear. You're speaking so fast, I can't understand what you're saying. Someone else, what's the difference between Varnashram Dharma and Sanatan Dharma? Oh, Varnashram Dharma uh, gives us temporary results. Gives, gives us what? Temporary results of any activity that we do uh, because it is at the material level, material platform. Right. But in Sanatan Dharma, that is permanent, eternal. Why? Uh, Why? Why? It is at spiritual level. Right, it's transcendental, right. Good, yes. The benefits of Sanatana Dharma is that's on the spiritual platform, transcendental, like when we do our devotional service. Right, we're doing chanting and hearing, but it's eternal benefit. We were explained, you don't lose the benefit. One percent done is eternal benefit. But Varnashram Dharma, it's material, it's temporary. And so when Lord Chaitanya was talking with Ramananda Rai, the first, the first thing Ramananda Rai suggested was Varnashram Dharma. But Lord Chaitanya said, no, this is external. He said, that is external. So Varnashram is external. I mean, you know, somebody, oh, externally, he's a brahmachari. Does it mean anything? Well, it doesn't really tell us much about him. You don't know if he's a devotee or not. 
It may be brahmachari, it may be a sannyasi, it may be grihastha, but you don't know what is their nature, what is their characteristic. It's external, it's just a designation, material designation. Our understanding under what circumstances following Varnashram Dharma is necessary. And we said, unless we're liberated, until we're liberated, we should follow Varnashram. Right? People who are who civilized, who are on the human platform, they should follow Varnashram. Qualification required for beginning the practice of Krishna consciousness with supportive references from 326. I don't remember the references. Anybody remember a reference from 326 about supporting, about beginning Krishna consciousness? Yeah? No Vedic formulas are required. What? No Vedic formulas are required to become No Vedic formulas are required. So, so anybody can become Krishna conscious. Right? Provided they get the mercy of a devotee. Yeah. And then how the practice of Krishna consciousness is transcendental to Varnashram Dharma. Can some, do you understand this point? Krishna consciousness is transcendental. Krish, why is it transcendental? Because Krishna consciousness doesn't depend on any varna or ashram. Someone may be a brahmana, can he become a devotee? Yes. Someone may be a sudra, can he become a devotee? Yes. Someone may be malecha, can they become devotee? Yes, anybody can become, doesn't matter what their varna or ashram is. Lord Chaitanya teaches us, I am not Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Sudra, I am not Sanyasi or Manaprastha or Grihastha or San Brahmachari, I am simply the servant of the servant of Lord Krishna, right? So Krishna consciousness doesn't depend on any varna or ashram. It's for everyone. It's open for everyone. All right. Can we have a man read this, please? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, may I? Please. Uh, this is the only remedy. Therefore, this is the panacea to engage everyone in Krishna consciousness, chanting Hare Krishna. He comes above the highest principle of Brahmanism. This is the greatest gift to humanity, that even he is in the fallen condition, the most degraded position, he can be raised to the highest position simply by chanting. This is the only remedy. Bhagavad Gita 3.1830, Los Angeles, December 30, 1968. Okay. Is it clear to everyone? The only remedy, chanting Hare Krishna. Everybody can become devotee. They can come to the highest position just by chanting. Materially, they may be in the lowest position, but they can come to the highest position by chanting Hare Krishna. Okay, any questions before we finish? Bharat, any question? Uh, no, Maharaj. Okay. So we'll finish here. We'll see you next week. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Go back to Vrinda Ki. Hare Krishna. Hare Bo. Hare Krishna.